Welcome back. Thank you for coming back so promptly from your lunch, and we'll get started now into the uh, plenary session. It's my very great pleasure to introduce my old friend Chen Jin. Since 2005, he's been the leader of the Sichuan Bana Tropical Botanic Garden, which is truly one of the world's great botanic gardens. It's situated in the tropical part in the most southern bit of Yunnan province in China, so it's in a biodiversity hotspot and in a remarkable situation. And amongst other things, that the resources and facilities, it has its own area of rainforest within the botanic garden, something most of us can only imagine. But it's also big enough to have enough land for large-scale plantings, covering the full genetic diversity of the trees that they grow, and then using them for open-air experimentation and science. So it's really impressive. But so are the excellent facilities of the herbarium, world-class laboratories doing world-class science, and if you haven't seen it, you must go there. It's amazing. In particular, when I first visited, I was impressed by the outstanding museum and exhibition space they have interpreting plants to the visitors to the garden. And that's actually supported and run by a really great team of people. They're mainly from local ethnic minorities, and they work to interest the visitors, accompany them, and engage them in understanding the deeper work of the garden. And they're absolutely brilliant at doing that. So it's a really world-class garden and worth seeing. But uh, Chen Jin is also, as I think we've heard, the leader of the China Union of Botanic Gardens. And that in itself is a very lively and dynamic, quite young network of almost 100 botanic gardens in China. And it's wonderful to think that there now are 100 botanic gardens in China. The growth of the whole field has been so lively there. So he's a very significant figure in his own country and indeed as a botanic garden leader on the world stage and amongst us today. So please join me now in welcoming Chen Jin. Thank you, Chen Jin. Thanks, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really my deep honor to be invited to, be, to give this plenary speech. I noticed that among the seven plenary speakers, I'm the only person to discuss, discuss about education. Probably it's not because botanic gardens education is not important. Maybe it's because education is not easy to discuss, or it's too easy to discuss. So I started with my title, Environment Education in Botanic Garden, by Charles, Charles Play. So first we start ask a question, why botanic garden need education? That's probably very straightforward. So it's from the definition, the education has always become the one component of the definition. And then we received tremendous amount of the visitors. So the, the information says that 200 million visitors a year for all the botanic garden received. Those are uh, people entering into botanic garden and also plus maybe five times of the people visit our website. Education is part of the botanic garden tradition. If we go back to those old botanic gardens, they conducted education 100 years ago. So, well, many other reasons. So education has been recognized and recalled by many of those international agendas to botanic garden such as GSBC or CBD. So may have a lot of reasons to say education in botanic garden is important. So we say botanic, we botanic garden, essentially the conservation agency. So our botanic garden compared to other conservation agency or research organization, the uniqueness of the botanic garden is we can, by providing exit to conservation, provided the technical support for the restoration and the research by engaging the institute conservation and by education 
we can put all these tools together integratively to achieve our goal. So this is the uniqueness for Botanic Garden. So this is a knockoff for XTPG, where it says actually it's uh, the fig tree. They have the three roots. One is represent the research. One is represent the uh, conservation or, or, or collections. The one is uh, represent the education. So education, it's a key role for Botanic Gardens to play. So let's ask, so educate what? So I think that actually there are quite some debates, but uh, nevertheless, generally speaking, we deliver knowledge, we deliver information. We provide ed environment education, which is uh, later on I will explain, and we provide science education. So what is our audience? Who we need to target to? Actually, we have a quite different kind of audience. We have a visitors, which is uh, obviously we need to target to. And the kids, it's always uh, uh, the audience, botanic garden is talked to. And the botanic garden also often receive a lot of politicians, or decision makers, which also good opportunity for us to educate, to communicate. And it's uh, local communities. So it's uh, many botanic garden located in the biological rich area where the local community is a major player. So it looks we have different kind of audience we need to talk to. But the nevertheless, each audience we provide educated properly need to be quite a different. Then we start to ask, so how to educate it or whether it works? For these two questions, probably it's not such easy to answer. So if you go back to see the many of our botanic gardens, we actually have quite some problems on these aspects. We are not such highly recognized the significance of the education. We do not have enough uh, resources, personal, financial. We are not always conducted education professionally. We do not have the, a lot of efforts for methodology development or many other problems we actually suffer. So people often say, well, education in Botanic Garden, just a, a chart, charts play. In Chinese, Xiaoke, uh, I do believe only less than 50 people in this room understand what Xiaoke mean. Or oh, it's, it's too easy, it's just uh, uh, play with kids. So, First, to deliver the knowledge in botanic garden, why it matter? Why do we need to deliver botanical knowledge or plant knowledge? Many years ago, the, uh, a term, the, the plant abundance, so there are uh, a list for the definition, but nevertheless, seems our human being, by nature or naturally, just uh, not take the plants as a sort of kind of higher rank. So either they are pay no attention to that, or either they are not visible to to the functional rule, or either they put them as a, a no neighbor compared with other wildlife. So our botanic garden, we need to promote. We may need to promote plants. Plants pr play, play the fundamental rule, so it should be uh, pay high attention. So as we understand from the learning theory, so the, the knowledge, people's knowledge gained by the both formal education and informal education, and some other learning process, everyday learning. So informal education is an important part of the learning process. And the Botanic Garden is a place to provide such kind of uh, sites for the informal education. And uh, we possibly understand that we, why we got good knowledge, then we can possibly generate positive attitude and uh, even possibly action. So there is a, a, a citation here. So only we, only we preserve, we love, only we love, we know, only we know we, we, are, we are taught. So knowledge is important. But the question would be, so whether botanic garden works for delivering knowledge? Actually, this question is certainly being seriously investigated. <laughs> a couple of years ago, Soft Union do a research in UK by investigating four botanic gardens, try to understand what that means for people who visit the botanic garden. And they conducted the questionnaires, and the results tell that 
It is not necessarily by a single visit, but by frequently visit visitors to Botany Garden, they do have much more significantly, much more knowledge compared with the, the other people in terms of those uh, ecological or, the, or et different aspects of, of plants. Interpretation in Botany Garden is important because plants cannot, cannot tell a story. So we need to explain by interpretation. Those are different inter interpretations in XTPG. I believe many of the Botany Garden do much better job than XTPG. So interpretation need to be accuracy and in interpretation need to be uh, target different audience, easy to pick up, and a good interpreting panel. Actually, it's a, it's a cooperation among the well, ecologist or, or botanist and the artist and the educational. It's not easy. So this is why COBG, we provide a special training, training program, help people how to develop a, 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 a good interpreting system in garden. Well, much more than that, so one of my students uh, do her master's degree, she, under the free choice learning theory, she think, how can we enhance our visitors to get more knowledge from the botanic garden by the visit? So he developed a kind of discovery map, basically put the 10 different kind of plants in the map and ask the visitor volunteer to take the map and uh, to try to search in those plants and uh, to, to see what, what happens for, for the for the people with the map, without the map. Interesting, and uh, we also do the observation, see uh, what's the difference between the people with the map and the people without. And the people with the discovery map will tend to spend more time to exploring plants and, uh, the, and the spend time in the botanic garden, and uh, spend more time to, to see those uh, posters, uh, panels, and uh, discuss with, with his colleagues about the plans. So as a whole, that's, uh, the, the people who this discovery mapper get more knowledge compared to the, uh, the uh, control. For the control visitor, we got a systematic assembly approach, try to, try to avoid a bias. And my and other students, it's uh, try to understand the things which is often happening in, in the garden at uh, according to the BGCI database, more than 10% of the botanic garden have a kind of visitor education center or museum. And he want to ask what's that mean in terms of the enhanced people's knowledge inside of the botanic garden. So he choose five botanic gardens in China uh, who have such kind of facilities and he do the serious research on that. So basically and then uh, and at the end of the visitor finished the tour, and uh, they, uh, they were finished the questionario, and uh, the and uh, the visitor visited the museum. They have the significant difference among the knowledge again and a couple of other things in most of those botanic gardens. The more interesting is that for XTBG and also Xiamen Botanic Garden, the people visit the museum. They also get more satisfaction of the, the tour by indicating for the three questions, whether you want to revisit, whether you recommend to the relatives, whether it's in the ticket price, it's reasonable. So knowledge can not only just fulfill our educational purpose, but also can enhance visitor satisfaction. So I tend to summarize in this part. So the botanic garden, uh, uh, education is important, and uh, the uh, interpretation uh, it's, it's, uh, it's important, and uh, the botanic garden do deliver knowledge or information to the visitors. So the environment education, it's a slightly different to the knowledge deliver. So it's uh, environment education tend to cultivate environment friendly citizens, so it changes people's behavior. So the original idea says that while you got more knowledge, you probably got the positive attitude, and then you probably got automatically you, you got the positive behavior. It's not really true. Human beings are more complex, more complicated than that. So we need to do research, try to understand how to change people's behavior. So one of the famous models to demonstrate that, so the behavior is predicted by the behavior intention and the perceived behavior control. 
And the behavior intention is determined by the attitude, the social norm, and the, and the perceived behavior control. So it seems the variable is more complex than the just the knowledge. So how to provide the proper environment education? We said the environment education uh, in the botanic garden need to be uh, talked to the specific audience and they need to be smart. Smart means uh, specific, measurable, attainable, and the, and the need to understand whether it works. So we need to know evaluation, need to measure the variable, how, that, how it works. So basically, environment education in botanic garden need to research. So this is why, so the four years ago, the, under the COPG, we initiated the special training program to, to training our uh, senior educational staff from the Botanic Gardens in China how to do environment education research. And we often invite uh, uh, overseas experts as a resource person and, it, and uh, provide a two weeks training programs. And uh, the, the three best of the participants, and uh, we continue send, send to the other countries, such as the UK, uh, such as uh, uh, Modern Britain, Chicago Botanic Garden, for continue study tour. So, in order to stimulate. So, here I just give a, a couple of examples. So, one is the climate change. So, everyone talk about it. this is a very important, this is a very obvious environment issue. So, education probably can play a role on that. And the Sam Botanic Garden already uh, evolved into. But the problem for education, for the climate change education, it's, it, it is not very relevant uh, because it's uh, very subjective. It's uh, far away. So it's a global issue. It's nothing related to my daily life and uh, uncertainty of the information and a couple of other things. So how to solve this problem? So for if ask the kids, so it's, uh, anything you want to take to, to again, it's a climate change. They have, they have no idea because it's very subjective. And then if you ask the same question to the old or senior or older lady, you say, well, all my life, I, I experienced the changes. So, so we think about it, their career kind of special program to try to ask the kids to communicate with their seniors in order to understand the rich, real changes happens in the, in the local, local scale. So my students do her master's degree, and then she, she developed a model by modifying the uh, uh, theory of the uh, plant behavior model, and try to improve the uncertainty, try to improve the uh, different parameters, and then to, to, and then the idea is try to collect the kids and the, as a group to communicate with their, with their seniors, which is uh, often over 60, 60 years old. So we got the three hypotheses. Hypothesis one, we believe those kind of climate, climatic change, local climatic change, can be ex experienced by people's uh, life, life, lifetime. And the communicating with the seniors for kids can improve their, their understanding about the, the climate change. And that can possibly generate uh, their intention to be mitigate the climate change. So the research is conducted throughout the China. We, we have the different uh, uh, gradients in terms of the uh, weather change in the past 30 years. So those are self 12 different scores. We have, the diff we have the category to how to choose these scores. Uh, the, I don't go to detail on that. And then we, we sit to the, our protocols. So we, we have the control group. We have the group only give the lecture. And we have the group with the lecture and also uh, have the focal, focal interview to their seniors. So this is uh, the finished, uh, conducted the questionnaire. And then the, uh, uh, seven kids together with the five uh, seniors that discuss roughly more than half, half hour. And then they summarize and they go back to report to the classes. So that uh, altogether we have more than 1,000 uh, samples. So 
the result turns to that first. So it's based on, so the, it's slightly difficult to observe this uh, figure. So on the, on the left, it's a proportion of those seniors mentioned about the change. On the right, it's a real change from the, from the station. So in many cases, the frequency of the mentions of the change, it's quite agreed to the real change happening in, this, in the site. And then we noticed a lot of uh, improvement in, uh, for the treatment group compared to the control group. But it, it varies for different variables. For some are very agreed in across different uh, scores, some are only significant being some of the scores. So as a whole, we noticed the communicator with the seniors can significantly interact the influence, the uh, behavior intention for a mini bit of the uh, climate change. So we summarize in this part, so environment, environment education, it's trying to change human behavior and it's, it's do needed research to understand. And the good environment educational research can help us not only understand what, whether it works, but also can understand how it, how it make it works. Science education, I mean, the people keep arguing so whether we need to do environment education or science education in Botany Garden, but it's not the, uh, it's not the really uh, matter. The science education, the first is uh, uh, knowledge on the, on the science, and the second is uh, try to teach kids, especially for kids, to how to, in the scientific way to deal with their daily life. And the third point, it's also equally important, it's a career pursuit. So the uh, obvious uh, significant decrease for the young generation that don't like to be a scientist, so which is uh, problematic for many countries. So instead of the uh, emphasize the differences between the environment education and science education, we need to notice that actually there are certain overlap. For example, the, now the environment issue, it's supposed to the contain the science and also contain the environment education. Citizen science, it's an emerging field. So the one recent paper published in science argues the convergence of the science education and environment education by citizen science. So this is a, uh, Final example, so one of my students do her PhD on that. So we have the program called the Tropical Rainforest Exhibition Program. So this program is quite famous in China. So every year we got the more than 3,000 kids, most from Beijing and from far distance, to go to Sichuan in the garden, spend three days. So these three days with the two parts. One part is just the experience the tropical, rain, tropical rainforest, the tropical plants, and the the second part is just to, together with our graduate, graduate students to develop a small project uh, by raising questions, uh, set up a hypothesis, test hypothesis, and then report the result. So this is, uh, they do the, do the uh, uh, walk across the tropical rainforest. So we invite our real scientists to give the talk to those, to those kids, why and how to be a scientist. And also they, they, together with the graduate, graduate students to conduct the research. And then they present the result. So the question, what does that mean for the kids? Whether it works from the short term and the, from the long term. So my students develop the model and say, we try to understand, especially for the long term impact, we try to combine the auto uh, geographical uh, memory model with the uh, 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 theory of the plant behavior model. So we believe the long-term impact can be detected by this memory and the memory unique function. Then can influence uh, uh, the, the pursuit for a scientist or career, career, career pursuit. So it's uh, two steps. One is the, sh the short term, immediately during the program. So it's, this is the uh, uh, evaluation for before and after. So it's from the table, probably not easy to see, but it, most of those variables got significant. So it means the short-term effects are obvious. And this is a quantitative survey by the uh, article, its students, and then those are word close to show what they get from this program. And then after that, uh, two years later, so my students go to Beijing to interview some of the students, so that uh, the short term is 300 
300 kids, and now it's uh, nearly 198 uh, kids. So a couple of different questions. First, whether they tend to be a scientist. So we noticed that the, the treatment group got a significantly high proportion for the kids tend to be a scientist compared to the control group. So control group come from the same class who do not attend our program. Well, this is uh, slightly uh, small to show, but uh, nevertheless, you see the, those programs influence uh, some variable. So as a whole, so this program can throw change in their uh, memory and uh, the interact memory, and uh, then indirectly lead to the uh, uh, behavior intention to be a scientist. So which suggests our program not only have the short-term impact, but also they have the long-term impact. So the summary on that, the so science, science uh, uh, education, I, 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 I don't need to read that. So at the whole, we can close. So the Botanic Garden, it's, to, it's a place to deliver, deliver uh, knowledge. And as an education in Botanic Garden, it's not uh, just a child's play. And as a, a well-designed program needs professional uh, skills, and the capacity in the interdisciplinary cooperation are really needed for a better educational program in Botanic Garden. Thank you. Thanks, Chen Jin, and thank you for allowing plenty of time for questions. And I think you're right in identifying that, at least within the plenary sessions, the spotlight is now very much on education. So please, are there questions out there? Yes, right here at the front, please. <coughs> Thank you for the time. I'm Annie from Indonesian Institute of Sciences, Indonesia. It's a Thank you very much for your presentation. It's very inspiring. Um, one question for you. Uh, whether you have collaboration with uh, Ministry of Education to gather uh, all the school uh, students or uh, for the evaluation also so that uh, the samples of the schools actually uh, more structured, recommended, recommended by the Ministry of Education. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So actually, it's, uh, there are two parts. So for the, we, we, we work very much to uh, need to the local school, which is very, quite a, not far distant from us. So we have the very formal need to them and they try to invite the, both the kids and also the teachers to uh, conduct an educational program in, in the garden. But for those kids from far distance, we cooperate with because uh, basically Botanic Garden, we are trying to avoid to take the responsibility for the whole the pro process of safety. So some people from Beijing, they collect the, collect the students and they cooperate and they, and they bring, bring students to our Botanic Garden. And then we have this partnership for more than 10 years already. Just saying another question, please. Um, it really is difficult from down here. I understand the comments about the bright lights. Yes, please, also in the front. Ah. Um, I had a question about uh, all the research that you do. You, where do you secure the institutional uh, research approval to conduct? Uh, the studies. Sorry, pardon me. <laughs> I mean, when you conduct these qualitative studies, there is like an institutional board that gives you the for ethics to work with children, and uh, because uh, um, they are part of an experiment. And my question is, uh, where do you get these approvals uh, as a botanic garden? Where do you get them from? I think if I understood correctly, you're asking about the experimental design of the studies and whether you 
had to get permission to carry out the work. Is that correct, or am I missing? Yes, I mean you need. Uh, um, sure, this is uh, well, this uh, how to say ethnic issue need to be solved before. So basically, it's a, a two, 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 uh, a two part. One uh, need to be approved by XDBG committee. We have the special committee to take over this. The other things we need to discuss with the uh, 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 schools and also guaranteeing all those uh, results are, uh, mm, how to say, no lame and it's uh, not harmful to the kids. In which case, if you don't mind, Chen Jin, I would like to ask one. Um, we, you referred to plant blindness, and that's um, an expression that I think is probably very familiar to everybody in this audience. And I've often wondered whether that is a phenomenon that could be recognized in every country and every region of the world, or if it's something which we know is particularly acute with young people in Europe. So have you formed any views on whether plant blindness is, is um, a significant phenomenon in every country that you visited, and what is your sense of it in China for Chinese people growing up today? I think uh, this phenomenon is quite obvious, but uh, I don't think uh, there is a serious research to try to compare the cultural difference or the country difference in terms of the proportion or the degree of this plan of blindness. And then China, it's, it's really a case, but the Good news is uh, now the more and more young people are fasc fascinated to discovery or photograph new plants and put in the, uh, some uh, citizen science programs. We hope that can help to improve. Hi, my name is Esti from Indonesia. Um, thank you so much for your presentation, and I'd like to also s mention how important education is in, elicit, um, in encouraging you know, so, uh, social change. And um, I was wondering whether the programs that you've initiated through your research, um, whether that should be embedded within the national curriculum in uh, China and all over the world. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your very good question. Actually, I think it's, uh, I'm not quite familiar with other countries, but for China, it's really a case. So how the botanic garden community, so our sort of kind of informal education, really can incorporate all the, all the educational system. It's actually, it's a quite a challenge. The, the problem is uh, basically different ministry, different system, they, they just work in different way. They just don't like to dialogue to each other. So this is why, so the two years ago, we in initiated a forum, try to invite all those uh, people come from educational system, from school, and from botanic garden, and uh, to discuss together how to solve the problem, what are our results, how we can face to, to adapt to their system, or vice versa. So it's on the way to, uh, to, to improve. for anyone? Okay, well, thank you very much, and thank you again, Chen Jin. Thank you. Thank you.